Hey there, Gordon. Really great to have this score from you. And I hope that you are keeping well and everything, you know, during these weird times. And yeah, it's it's just great to see something that, you know, where you just really have organized your ideas so clearly. And, um, you know, it looks like you are using Dorico in a really great way. It's just, you know, very... Um, you know, things are, are just really clearly scored and yeah, just, just really a joy to look at this. Um, <clears throat> so I will just comment on things as I go rather than making any overall uh, observations as yet. Um, you know, starting off, um, just just possibly think about the um, <clears throat> the little swells in the um, in the piano part as not necessarily being surges of the entire texture but maybe just intended for the um, um, for the melody right da, 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 da. right so that not so that only one note changes in the entire uh, original piano chord right right in here uh, and or here doubled by horn so that note isn't necessarily made louder by the pianist right is really the melody that has the that has the arc to it so you know just like worry you know think about those kinds of situations when interpreting um, uh, this kind of you know especially like really simple impressionist music where you know just basically it starts off with a chord and a little bit of melody right and so whether or not the nuances are really intended for the whole texture to swell or not right but you know having said that this is nicely done and you know once again we got have another score um, that has been transposed up a half step to C uh, I think it really works in the context of what you're doing here and you know little touch of you know, a little touch of Celesta is very, very charming. Da 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 da, bum bum bum, and so on. So we're climbing, okay. Then, like here, like the the slurs and the woodwind all really make sense. Like you know, the this line here and the clarinets, um, this stuff going on here and the horns, it's all fine, okay. The, you know, the only thing I would have you think about is whether or not it's wise to have this much bow you know over over that many uh, uh, that many bars right so so yeah so i mean it it's you know you know da 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 right um it i i think that like you just have to think about like what is what is going to be connected together how it's going to slur or like how the how the articulation of the bow is going to matter and whether the articulation of the tonguing is also going to line up with the bowing of the strings and whether or not that matters, right? So I just would say that this should be broken down into shorter bows or else basically just really kind of lose any kind of ability for the um, for the strings to to have much control, you know, just really everything has to be really soft and slow. Uh, and of course, like you're, it's interesting. Like you say crescendo, and then you say diminuendo, but you don't really give us any um, any guide as to how big you're getting, right? So piano crescendo to what, right? To mezzo forte, to forte, like we don't know, right? So you have to, and and especially important, like when you are scoring this harp right in here, and also, you know, this is interesting. Celesta with no dynamic marks. So people might think that I was going to get on Gordon's case about that, but no, <laughs> because the Celesta just kind of has one dynamic, really, and it's it doesn't really, I mean, about the loudest it could play in an orchestral texture would be mezzo piano compared to the rest of the orchestra's mezzo piano, right? And then how soft can it play? It actually, you know, I mean, you cannot really bring harp down to, a, excuse me, you cannot really bring celesta down to a whisper the same way that you can with, say, harp or strings, right? So it does really have a limited dynamic level, and if that is the case, then, you know, why bother adding dynamic marks, right? So it is a very sane thing 
to not score dynamic markings unless the the entire Celesta part itself has dynamic relationships to its own uh, its own phrasing and you know its its own um, its the the way that it is playing through its own phrasing and so on. Okay, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I think you need a destination dynamic for the middle of this, right? Um, of course, you can just leave that up to the conductor and you may not get exactly what you want. That's fine too. Um, yeah, so just kind of think about that. Maybe not make the slur so long here, right? Um, I think maybe like just at least having it break right here would be good. Of course, it doesn't matter so much with, you know, long tied notes, but still, you know, it's a lot to be under one bow. And it really does, ins you know, if, you're, if your bow is going to move that slow, then it almost ensures that the music is going to have to be soft, so there can't be much of a crescendo, right? So those are all sort of things that would apply in there. Now here, I would probably, um, you know, if, if some voices are tied and others aren't, um, and there's motion in a part like this, I would really just have the, uh, I would split the voices into, you know, rather than having two on a stem, right? So it just makes, it's just easier to read. It makes more sense. And since you're giving like the lower part its own slur anyways, it really should have its own voice, right? So that would just be a better, a more proper use of, you know, it's, it's not, it's different in a case like this, right? Where, um, you know, you're just going from a unison or a tutti note to divisi, right? But here there are just actually two separate players playing, so it really makes more sense for them to be in separate voices. All right, so moving on to the development. Da 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 dum da da dum. What happened to my millennium note of da dum? We're not hearing the, um, you know, well, here it is. Yeah, because like everything is jacked up. Yeah, and then, yeah, so great. So you did a great job there. Da, 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 dum. So there's not too much. Yeah, and then, yeah, that's really, really great. Great scoring. Um, not just because I agree with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, you know, and da, da, dum with bassoons. Ba, bum, bum. So, you know, just like little trills. It, very, very nice. Just, just very delicate and, um, you know, kind of like, old style cinematic in a way just you know, kind of reminding me of a little bit of golden age kind of scoring just you know um you know going in from there into the 50s and then uh, my only my only caution here is like do you want your players to accent diaphragmatically that's basically what you're asking here right da right like they they have no if, if since they're not tonguing this note right since this isn't a separately articulated note but the end of a slur they won't be adding any emphasis to this now they may do that anyway they might say ah oh, yeah there's just not much of an accent here and i want to match with the pizzicato so the hell with the composer or the orchestrator i'll just go da tongue right as opposed to da right it's just like it's kind of a shove like when you're in the middle of a slur and you have to do an accent, you just kind of have to shove with the diaphragm, right? Um, and, you know, same thing with the bassoons, right? So, I mean, especially like if you really want this, you know, to match, like at least, I mean, since you're not doing mezzo staccato or staccato or tenuto staccato or any other kind of separately articulated notation right in here, then, you know, then it just really is... Yeah, it really doesn't give much much emphasis on the downbeat there, right? It's because it's already slurred and smooth as opposed to pizzicato. All right, and then this is really cool, but I would say you don't really need the uh, slur marks here. I would just yeah, I would I would get rid of them. Um, I mean I mean I know you're sort of ex kind of expressing that you want the transition between the notes to be smooth rather than separated, but. I just I think it's just a little unnecessary at this point. Uh, but you know, along with the celesta, see that the celesta is what I would slur, right? Even though that in itself is kind of unnecessary, it sort of slurs itself. But then, like when you slur it, you kind of give the 
player a little bit of a cue if you're not marking pedalings, right? So, okay. Bum, 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 bum. So, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting that, yeah, that you kind of go back, like the direction isn't completely downwards, right? Da, 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 da. Right, we're coming back up rather than just heading all the way down with the direction of the notes, right? And, you know, not to mention uh, throwing in these Gs here with the um, with your second violins. Uh, but I really love this, this little drop off here. As far as this is concerned, just like, you know, cornets and trombones, that's very, very cool. I like um, the combination of that with flutes, excuse me, with oboes, I meant to say, sorry, with uh, with oboes, it's a very lily touch. I would want the oboes to be forte going down to mezzo piano, right? Or the uh, brass to be mezzo piano going down to pianissimo in order for this to really work. And I think you should mark pianissimo again, if that's what you intend here. Um, the conductor might elect, they might just tell people, hey, put piano in there, sort of you know, match what the winds are, are doing, right? So if that's your intention, then you got to, you know, you got to tell them. But just, you know, just think to yourself, like, what is the overall meaning of Lily's gesture? She's, you know, she's, she's scoring out, da, 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 da. And when she goes down, she resolves inside the chord. Right? And now you're asking the music to go da 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 da. Right? So she's, it's almost like her head is looking downwards at the ground rather, you know, at the, in the, in the piano music and in your orchestration, she's looking up at the sky again. Right? So here, like you're interpreting it, cloud obscures the sun, but soon clears again. So, I mean, that makes sense within your interpretation of what the music means. All right? But yeah, I just like just think about how much that changes the the arc of the music, right? Or take it just kind of brings us up again in pitch once again. Um, yeah, as as opposed to just the way that the shapes that um, Lily has scored originally. But yeah, and once again, I just really love the harp right there at the end. That's very cool. All right, now this is going to be a full fat very band-like note. A3, B-flat clarinet, you know, just hitting that hard. Yeah, yeah, very cool. So, you know, I, I love the fact that it's just very simple uh, string scoring, uh, reacting to the clarinet note, and yeah, that is gonna be a rich, full note. Right, harp is going to have to be marked forte accent if you want to compete with this. Right, if this, if you want this to come through, might even be better just to make that a cello pizzicato as opposed to a harp note because, like, the harp is just really, you know, it's just so weak compared to everything else happening right here. So, da 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 da. Yeah, I mean, um. Yeah, I, I like the clarinets coming in over the horns. I think that there needs to be a little bit more, um, you know, why drop back down to piano here? Like, just keep it mezzo piano, you know, leading forwards, mezzo forte to forte. That's what I would do right in here. Just to keep it above, you know, keep it louder than the horns. So, like, here you're balancing really great. But the horns are going to, you know, if everybody really is balancing the way you suggest here, the horns may be too radiant for the clarinet to um, to truly stand out. Cool little pizzicato in here. That's nice, just like bringing off the third beat. Da, 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 da. And yeah, da 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 da. Um, yeah, and and once again here, like if you want this to all merge beautifully and seamlessly together rather than the horns standing out in front of the strings, then mezzo forte horns, all right? And then this will all blend together just beautifully. Now, da 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 da, and I really like this. Da, uh, da, uh, 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 uh. All right, 
just just so nicely done. And yeah, just throwing in the horns right under there, and then you know this kind of snarly um, notes right in here, the the uh, major second underneath the uh, this big old uh, oboe and clarinet chord plus tremolo strings. Really nice, very cinematic. Okay, and then we get to here. Da, da. Okay, now I felt that this fermata was just too much. I'm just going to check something on the previous page really quick. Yeah, so once again, you had a, um, a fermata here as well. And I felt it was also a little too much in terms of slowing the, you know, just kind of bringing things to a stop. And the thing, the same thing is true right in here. I feel that this is just really kind of, just kind of kills the momentum of the music. And that's all stuff that can be adjusted by the conductor. So it's not a huge crisis or anything. Um, uh, I, I almost feel like you could get around this um, with just using the ritardando, ritardando a little slower and then a little pausa here, right? A little, a little breath mark. Da, 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 boom, da, 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 and back to the, and a tempo again, like without having to really hang on that last note so much. Okay. All right, so now we're at the restatement. Da, 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 da. Nice flute scoring. Okay, now, all right, now once again, all right, now this is just this strange thing that keeps happening in the music, and I do not understand why. Maybe somebody can comment in, in the comments below in this YouTube video or on Facebook or something. And why is it that with this passage, everybody had the same idea, and that is instead of strings in unison, like with the like in octaves, say you know the with the higher voice going in unison with the flute, which was often chosen, you have strings below, flute above. Now, if you refer back to my tip in 100 more orchestration tips, which I hope everybody in this dotted brev level has picked up their free copy, uh, which is you know complimentary to all of you great supporters at these upper levels. Um, that you know, I do have a tip about how flute is absorbed by strings, especially when the strings are very rich and dense like this. Like you've got 30 players playing uh, a single line here. Now, the resonance of the, you know, the radiance, I should say, of the overtones and the body of tone is going to really absorb what's going on with a single flute player. Now that single flute player could play out a little and then that gets rid of the effect. But if you listen to some Mozart symphonies, Mozart is actually scoring that. I mean, he knows that the flute will disappear, which is fine with him because he kind of didn't like flute all that much. But, you know, but he knows that the sound of the flute will be absorbed into the resonance of the of the string overtones, right? I mean, I'm trying to think of examples like um, the the G minor symphony has got many examples of that, several examples of that, uh, especially in the um, in the minuet, right? So so yeah, that will possibly happen here, right? So um, I mean, so just like I'm, I'm so ple people, please read 100 more orchestration tips. You got nothing better to do. You're stuck at home. Right, you know, you, um, you know, stop binging Netflix and, <laughs> uh, or just take a minute out from your scoring or whatever, whatever project you're working on. And yeah, just read, you know, read some of those tips. Just watch, watch out for some of those things. Now here, I think, if you know, if the, if the first flute had some nuances, like maybe some hairpins, like da da, then, you know, I think it would come through better. Yeah, and so just the next, you know, the 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 you know, before I jump into analyzing the orchestration here, I would just have to say overall, do you really want these really long pianistic like slurs on things, right? Do you really want five of these notes under one bow for your violins and violas? All right? Because you lose the you lose the any kind of emphasis of articulation of changing bowing on the on the downbeat, right? Da 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 da, 
right? Like we're, we're losing that ability. And here we're slurring across the beat. Da, 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 da. So we're not, there's like no, there's no down bow on the beat. So like if you're, if you are ever in a, at a rehearsal and somebody raises their hand and says, who has the downbeat at bar 26, then you know you are slurring across the bar too many times, <laughs> right? Because mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's just really hard to hear. So, you know, I'm just not so sure that this really works that well. You know, despite you know, despite it being something that is is great for piano, um, I'm just not so sure how well that is that adapts to. You know, and then of course just having really really long slurs over you know four bars. Right, I think we kind of lose the ability to sort of push at any downbeat, right? Even though, yeah, you know, there's quite enough just by playing this lower heavy brass, but still. Is cornet really heavy brass though, right? That's a that's a discussion for some other time. I love the celesta rolls and the and the harp and yeah, that's this is all great. I mean, I'm sort of picking little bits and pieces out of the you know out of the overall picture but there's no question this is all really scored nicely yeah, excellent work I mean throughout all of this just the the basic um, you know the the basic architecture of the scoring is just really well done Gordon uh, you know speaking of like like look at how nicely yeah just the you know the shorter slurs and everything else it just feel like that some of that should have been applied to the strings and 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 winds in some places okay so now we are going to um the nitty-gritty here now i can see some of the you know some of the decision to break up these bars um okay so as some schools of thought only really state the um, you know they 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 have the harmonic on the first note and then it's just taken for granted that it isn't played for the rest of the or that that you don't need to mark the that harmonic sign for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the tie but look I think you should okay and I just think you should be absolute as if, it, if it's a question of being clear or not clear always default on the pathway to clarity okay so just yeah mark mark that over every single note because you don't know where somebody is going to come in in the middle of a you know like where the conductor is like just did not have time to look at your score they don't know what they're doing mm -hmm. you know their wife just left them or something like that or their car just just had an accident and they have to you know they have to take care of this um this like regional orchestra rehearsal and they're you know they're out of their mind and they're halfway in the middle and they kind of get stuck on the fact you know they waste two or three minutes of, of precious rehearsal time trying to figure out whether or not there are harmonic notes on a particular thing and you know and they have to look back two or three pages in the score and then they uh, they go oh right you know it's so look I mean just mark every single note it's the same thing as like um, yeah, you know, if you have a row of stop notes on horns, you would just you would definitely mark every uh, plus over every single note, even tied notes, right? So just you know, here I am wasting your time. So apologies. So, but the whole question was whether or not you actually needed to have divisi staves, and I think that you could have gotten away without having divisi staves here. Yeah, even yeah, I mean even here. Well, I mean, see, it gets a little complex here. So I can see not I can see the logic here. But even this is possible with two separate voices. So, anyhow, um, so here we get to, like, just to talk about the scoring. Da, da, and, and here you've, like, chosen to just write out, um, like, the, uh, the, you know, just like you just want a beautiful big um, glissando going up. So, um, I would say in a concert music, score in a kind of concert music context I would write it out completely right and just really work out where anybody is at any particular given time right 
because you don't know if somebody's going to have to start in the middle of a bar or whether or not the harpist is experienced in film and theater music and, and other other places where this shortcut is more common. Right? Um, yeah, but you know, like the, the whole structure of this, really soft pad of strings, horns, which I feel should, um, you should sort of like, if you don't want to feel a sudden drop off here, just have some um, diminuendo hairpins, just, you know, piano diminuendo each time. So that just, so that it's more than just the horn rounding off the end of their note, that they really are eclipsing it so that it just dies off into everybody else's texture. Okay, so, so that all works fine. You know, the big roll, the, the solo violin, it's all really nicely balanced, except the horn should be pianissimo, right? Okay, and there really is no, like, it's just a textural thing. Like, um, there is no uh, crescendo. There's no, um, you don't terrace things upwards, right? So that would be something I would, I would think about before uh, finalizing the score. It's just to think about whether or not you want the... Um, you know, instead of just just growing in height, right? You know, just getting higher and higher each time. Um, whether you want the you know the texture itself to strengthen, right? In in dynamic force. But yeah, it's the same strategy every single time. You know, but as the as the pitch gets higher, you know, you have to stretch it out across other instruments it's getting a bit high for bassoon you know so yeah it's all fine a little bit of piccolo you don't take the piccolo too high and then we're finally ending with cello excuse me cello celesta plus piccolo and then the sort of like little throbbing notes and once again yeah you have to mark all notes harmonic i i feel in concert music you know, and yeah, Lontano. And, you know, it might be good to sort of have like a, to sort of suggest a bit of a pulse, you know, whether just like a little tenuto mark over these written E's. Ba, uh, 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 right. Yeah, so, I mean, just, yeah, just a really great score. It's yeah, just, you know, this is my fifth score. <laughs> uh, that I have evaluated today, and uh, yeah, just before I got into it, I was thinking, oh, you know, I could knock off. I, I, you know, I evaluated a bunch of scores earlier in the week, and then five yesterday, and then I've done four today. I could stop, but you know, seeing that it was Gordon's score, and just quickly reviewing uh, the study that I'd put into it earlier, and uh, I mean, I just, I just felt that. It just gave me the strength to go on, and you know what a great example, you know what an inspiring score for, for me to continue with, and you know it's that really is indicative of, of a lot of maybe just most, if not you know almost every single one of our, um, brev level dotted brev level and longa level scores has just you know just been maximum effort just huge effort almost every single brev entrant went all the way to the end and and you know dotted brev and longa um just almost except for one beginning orchestrator pretty much everybody had a lot of experience and a lot of a lot of great ideas and really different ideas from each other. Like I have yet to see one person really resonate with another one in terms of taking the same approach on anything, all right? And that makes it really refreshing for me. People have sort of asked me, well, how can you look at so many scores of the same thing over and over again? And it's like, you know, I am not paying attention as much to the material as a thing as I am paying attention to the voice of the orchestrator, right? Uh, I did a um, I did a lecture last year in woodwind orchestration where I had the same couple of phrases played by different combinations of instruments in octaves, and you know people were sort of giggling about that in the audience, and I said like, yeah, we'll just 
or one or two there was hardly anybody in the audience so one or two people thought that was kind of funny okay but you know the thing is it's just like Ravel's Bolero right after a while you're just listening to the orchestration and you're ignoring the actual content of the music and I mean I'm not going that far with this ignoring the content but my focus is certainly on on the actual orchestration and the personality of the orchestrator and uh, you know in you know as in a case like this too you know I just really see past the actual notes and the and their context as one of Lily Boulanger's works and I'm able to get past that and just to really see who Gordon is uh, as an or orchestrator and uh, you know I've, al I've always liked what I saw and this no less right so just think about some of those points that I had you know like like for instance, you know how much, you know how much um, emotion could you get out of this, you know, um, if it all if it wasn't all one bow, you know, da da, right, as opposed to da, or even like you know separate bows, everything separate bow, da 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 da. And just every just da, 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 da. you know how well would that work anyway so I think I will leave it there uh, for this very productive day and just real exciting looking at everybody's scores and all that's left is just a thank you so much Gordon for supporting the channel and for you know sharing with me your professional abilities as an orchestrator and and musician and composer and everything else uh, put into this score your insights and your perspective I appreciate that so very much and uh, you know I'm glad that like outside the group that we have you know that we are acquainted and that you know we've had a chance to meet up and and it's so great to you know I just I, I was just shattered that you know halfway through <laughs> Um, halfway through my trip to LA I wasn't able to get together I think we were we might have we talked about possibly meeting or something like that and like just everything got canceled and I had to fly home so yeah I just hated that but maybe I'll be back next year maybe things you know maybe there will be a COVID-19 vaccine by 21 <laughs> let's hope all right so Thank you, Gordon. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And that is it for me today. And I will be back, I hope, with five more evaluations tomorrow. <laughs>